Mr. Bourgeois, you welcomed the signals of the European Union to set goals for a new agenda 2030. But how powerful are these goals if the countries are not implementing them into their policy making? If we're talking strictly 2030, I won't talk about the 2020 ones, which are binding, and one could at the moment discuss whether they're being completely implemented and whether member states should do even more to get there. Uh, on 2030, for now, the only thing we have is a green paper. It's a consultation document, uh, and the consultation document is a document which puts things on the table and asks questions. Uh, people, member states, people, associations, are now preparing their responses, there will be a debate, there will be a public debate, and at the end of this, hopefully, there will be enough support for renewables targets for this to become legislation. And hopefully, there will be enough support for binding targets for these targets to become binding. Um, so at the moment, I welcome the Green Paper, but of course, it's not binding upon anyone because it's only a consultation document which proposes a direction. And even this direction is not very clear. I mean, the, the green paper is still quite neutral as to whether the Commission prefers greenhouse gas targets only or also renewables and efficiency next to it. But um, I'm confident that if we, uh, if we work on time and if uh, the citizens get involved and the debate continues for the coming year, we can get binding targets in place. Uh, and if we have binding targets, then member states will have to implement them. The nice thing is that we already have 2020 binding targets. So that means that member states to get to 2020 have already put in place units that in, in the ministries that are in charge of renewables. People work on this every day, all day. And I think it will be easier to continue with this and to, to continue to implement these targets for post-2020. Um, so how powerful will they be if they're binding? If they're binding upon member states, which will be very difficult to achieve, but I hope we can still convince member states, well, then they're quite powerful. And then one could discuss maybe the possibility of having uh, binding targets, binding not upon member states, but upon companies, a kind of certificate system where companies are forced to go down to up one system. Um, I'm not sure this is exactly the way forward. It would be easier for member states to accept, but then they wouldn't know where the investments would go. And I'm not sure Europe is ready for this, but this is another way to have binding targets. The emission trading system. Uh, which is facing a crisis at the moment because of the big amount of certificates given out. Um, what are your proposals to make the emission trading system work again? Uh, so the emissions trading system, it has been evaluated that the oversupply is around 2 billion allowances, I think. Um, and what is on the table right now is this backloading of 900 million of these allowances. Uh, the backloading means you take 900 million allowances and you put them, uh, well, you, you put them aside for a few years. So this is the first step. So hopefully we can win this vote next week in the Parliament. If we win this vote in the Parliament, then this goes to Council. And if Germany finally has a position, because there's no position for Germany, which is ridiculous because Germany is supposedly in favor of 30% greenhouse gas reductions. So if we get Germany on the table after the parliament, we will get this backloading go through. This will increase the carbon price a little bit, but certainly not enough to have a real signal. Um, what you need to do next is to make sure that these allowances that have been backloaded actually disappear because backloading is just putting them aside, but they come back in a few years. So what we are calling for as the wind industry is for a cancellation of allowances. Uh, the allowances that have been backloading, we can, there's the legal means for the commission to cancel them altogether. This should increase the carbon price a little bit more. And the third step is to get a 2030 climate and energy package so getting our targets, the binding targets we were just talking about, and for the greenhouse gas target, the ETS bit of this target needs to not only have a new 2030 uh, target, it needs to adjust the linear factor for the, um, for the 2020 trajectory. So we increase uh, the trajectory 
that we have for 2020 to set it on the right path to 2050. And that means that this 2030 new legislation also fixes the amount and reduces the amount of oversupply uh, for the period up to 2020. So for us, there's three steps. And uh, by 2015, 16, if we have the legislation in place, we're in a much better place for the carbon market. Thank you.